Enough's enough. For years, he has been Britain's bad boy, a hero to many. The left in Britain labeled him a racist and a Nazi. He is Stephen Lennon, also known as Tommy Robinson, former head of the English Defense League. Tommy Robinson was a pseudonym he adopted in the early days of the group, when it was risky to be a member. I interviewed Lennon before he shocked Britain last month by announcing that he was leaving the English Defense League. The EDL began in the working-class town of Luton in 2009, when militant Muslims protested against British soldiers returning from Iraq. From there, it grew to become a self-styled defender of democracy against the spread of radical Islam in Britain. The EDL was able to turn out thousands of supporters at its demonstrations. Tough men from the working class. You have some rough-looking guys at your demonstrations. Of course, yeah. Working-class communities in this country are rough communities. It was never going to be doctors and nurses that stand up to militant Islam on the streets of this country. When we first formed, um, the response against us was a violent, a very violent response by members of the Islamic community who come out and images were sent across this country in national newspapers and in media of our supporters on the floor getting their heads kicked in. Now, when we went to our next demonstration, how many female 30 year old school teachers are going to come out and oppose militant Islam? There's a certain sort of man that decides to dig in the trenches on the front line to fight for our queen and our country in faraway fields against forces of Sharia in Afghanistan and Iraq. It's the same sort of man that's willing to protect their home. But after years of trying to keep extremists and Nazis out of the EDL, Lenin finally threw in the towel and left, as he explained on BBC's Newsnight program. I've battled for four years to keep racists, Nazis, extremists out of this movement. I've battled and dedicated my life to it. And they were invited back. And I felt let down by the people that in the organisation that were in positions, the same people that are calling me a traitor now, that were in positions invited Nazis to stand with them in the street. One of my offences is for knocking out one of these Nazis. In the early days of the English Defence League, purity comes with time in any organisation. When we formed, we're a nationalistic organisation. It attracted the wrong sorts as well as the right sorts. And it took us years of battling these wrong sorts and these Nazi elements to get rid of them, to let them know we stand with Israel, we fully support Israel. The other charge against Lenin that he hears over and over is that he's a racist. Please tell me how I'm a racist bigot. Please, please explain to me. Please explain. Couldn't explain. Because you are. No, I'm not a racist bigot because you tell me I'm a racist bigot. No, no, no. This left wing and far left view and agenda that anyone who has a different opinion to you is a racist or bigot is the reason that grooming gangs have been facilitated in this country. And people have not been allowed to say how they feel because you're a racist. Bang, bang, beat them back down. And then if you're a racist, you lose your job. My goddaughter is black. My niece is mixed race. So. Englishness is not about the colour of your skin. Lenin warns that British authorities are creating the conditions for civil war by both allowing the spread of radical Islam and restricting freedom of speech to criticise and protest against it. So we have this democracy where we've actually had people, some of our members have been given 10-year ASBOs not to protest about Islam. Really? This is the land of democracy. If you're disgusted at what's happening in this country, what are you supposed to do? Because through democracy, when you're angry, you channel that frustration through peaceful protest. If you take that right away from people, what are they going to do? They're going to be responsible for creating monsters. The last thing we want is a war in this country. But it's the inevitable outcome to the way the country's going. Now, the British people are not going to sit back and take much more. Even though he has left the EDL, Lenin says it hasn't changed his opinion that radical Islam is still the biggest threat Britain faces. Previous prime ministers, Will it, whether it be William Gladstone said there'll never be peace on this earth so long as we have the Quran, it's an accursed and violent book. Then we have Winston Churchill, who said Islam and a man is like rabies and a dog. And then we have David Cameron, who says Islam's religion of peace. What's changed? Because the, the book hasn't changed. Lenin believes the tide of public opinion is turning, especially after the murder of Lee Rigby and the epidemic of Muslim rape gangs in the country. Politicians are cowards in this country, yeah? In our country, too. Complete cowards. Now, when they see... And hypocrites. And hypocrites, completely. Yeah. Uh, and, and what they are is they're all the same at present. They're all the same. There's no difference even between Labour Party and Conservative Party in what they say in Stanford. Now, when they see this swing from left to right, which it's underway, there's no left-wing organisation that can stop it. There's no police force that can stop it. They're all trying to do all these task forces, all these different things to stop what's happening. You can't stop this. 
it's so, going to be so powerful. Now that the man known as Tommy Robinson has left the EDL, there are fears that it could splinter and become what it was always accused of being, a violent, dangerous collection of neo-Nazis and white supremacists. Lenin says he's chosen a new strategy of working with moderate Muslims in the hope that more people will listen to his message. But even though he's left the English Defense League, Stephen Lenin still lives every day under a death threat. Do you, uh, uh, you know, you have family. Do you ever regret doing what you're doing? Yeah, of course. You know, for my wife, my three children, I have, well, genuine as a father, I've got serious worries about what it's going to be like for my kids being my son, being my children, if I'm even here. Am I scared of the death threats? People want to kill me and attacks against me, etc. Yeah, I am. Of course I am. I wouldn't be human if I wasn't. But I am terrified for the entire next generation of this country and for this country's history, its culture, its identity. It's all under attack.